Confessions 13 Now that my soul has recovered from that wound, in which perhaps I was guilty of too much worldly affection, tears of another sort stream from my eyes. They are tears which I offer to you, my God, for your handmaid. They flow from a spirit which trembles at the thought of the dangers which await every soul that has died with Adam. For although she was alive in Christ even before her soul was parted from the body, and her faith and the good life she led resounded to the glory of your name, yet I cannot presume to say that from the time when she was reborn in baptism, no word contrary to your commandments ever fell from her lips. Your Son, the Truth, has said any man who says to his brother, you fool, must answer for it in hell fire. And however praiseworthy a man's life may be, it will go hard with him if you lay aside your mercy when you come to examine it. But you do not search out our faults ruthlessly, and because of this we hope and believe that one day we shall find a place with you. Yet if any man makes a list of his deserts, what would it be but a list of your gifts? If only men would know themselves for what they are. If only they who boast would make their boast in the Lord. And so, my glory and my life, God of my heart, I will lay aside for a while all the good deeds which my mother did. For them I thank you, but now I pray to you for her sins. Hear me through your Son, who hung on the cross and now sits at your right hand and pleads for us, for he is the true medicine of our wounds. I know that my mother always acted with mercy and that she forgave others with all her heart when they trespassed against her. Forgive her too, O Lord, if ever she trespassed against you in all the long years of her life after baptism. Forgive her. I beseech you, do not call her to account. Let your mercy give your judgment an honourable welcome. For your words are true and you have promised mercy to the merciful. If they are merciful, it is by your gift and you will show pity on those whom you pity. You will show mercy where you are merciful. I believe that you have already done what I ask of you, but Lord, accept these vows of mine. For on the day when she was so soon to be released from the flesh, she had no care whether her body was to be buried in a rich shroud or embalmed with spices, nor did she wish to have a special monument or a grave in her own country. These were not the last wishes she passed on to us. All she wanted was that we should remember her at your altar where she had been your servant day after day without fail. For she knew that at your altar we received the holy victim, who cancelled the decree made to our prejudice, and in whom we have triumphed over the enemy who reckons our past sins, trying to find some charge to bring against us, yet can find no fault in him in whom we conquer. Who shall restore to him his innocent blood? Who shall take us from him by repaying him the price for which he bought us? By the strong ties of faith, your handmaid had bound her soul to this sacrament of our redemption. Let no one tear her away from your protection. Let not the devil, who is lion and serpent in one, bar her away by force or by guile. For she will not answer that she has no debt to pay for fear that her cunning accuser should prove her wrong and win her for himself. Her reply will be that her debt has been paid by Christ, to whom none can repay the price which he paid for us, though the debt was not his to pay. Let her rest in peace with her husband. He was her first husband and she married no other after him. She served him, yielding you a harvest, so that in the end she also won him for you. O oh my Lord, my God, inspire your servants, my brothers. They are your sons and my masters whom I serve with heart and voice and pen. 
inspire those of them who read this book to remember Monica, your servant, Asher Alter, and with her, Patricius, her husband, who died before her, by whose bodies you brought me into this life, though how it was I do not know. With pious hearts, let them remember those who were not only my parents in this light that fails, but were also my brother and sister, subject to you, our father, in our Catholic mother, the Church, and will be my fellow citizens in the eternal Jerusalem for which your people sigh throughout their pilgrimage from the time when they set out until the time when they return to you. So it shall be that the last request that my mother made to me shall be granted in the prayers of the many who read my confessions more fully than in mine alone.